सो हाई एवरी वन माई नेम इज शिवम बोहरा आई एम अ थर्ड ईयर कंप्यूटर साइंस इंजीनियरिंग स्टूडेंट फ्रॉम देहरादून आई लव सॉल्विंग प्रॉब्लम एंड आई ऑल्सो लव टू टीच वेलकम टू आवर चैनल लर्न कंपेटेटिव प्रोग्रामिंग विद कोड शेयर सो इफ यू आर इंटरेस्टेड इन कंपेटेटिव प्रोग्रामिंग एंड वॉन्ट टू लर्न इन मास्टर डेटा स्ट्रक्चर्स एंड एलगोरिदम्स देन दिस इज अ वन स्टॉप डेस्टिनेशन फॉर यू हेयर वी पोस्ट वीकली प्रॉब्लम एक्सप्लेनेशंस conceptual videos on various programming paradigms and also conduct live problem solving sessions so before we actually get started here's a reminder for you to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already yet so in this video we'll have a very basic introduction about arrays as well as strings so let's start now let us first understand the advantage of using an array over simple variables right now with simple variables let's say we have a simple variable a and it is storing a value let's say it is storing 3 right so with simple variables we know that a single variable can store a single value right so if we have to store thousand numbers then for that we would require thousand variables as we know that a single variable can store a single number so for thousand num numbers we, re we require thousand variables right so let's say if storing a number into a variable if this particular thing takes one line of code right if taking or storing a number into a variable if this particular thing takes one line of code then to store thousand number i repeat to store a number it takes one line of code then then to store thousand numbers we would require thousand lines of code right so with simple variables we require thousand lines of code to store thousand numbers right but with arrays if we combine arrays with loops then it will take only three lines of code to store all these thousand numbers into a single array right so we can see that how drastically we have reduced the size of our program from thousand lines to just three lines so this is the advantage of using an array over simple variables so an array is basically a variable that is used to store multiple data items of the same type so it can store multiple data items but all these data items should be of the same type right we'll understand the different types of data items in the upcoming videos but as of now just just remember that these data items should be of the same type right now we can visualize the array in this form it is a large block of memory and array is a large block of memory divided into small small chunks right so an array is a large block of memory divided into small small chunks and each of these chunks is of the same size and will carry a single data item now let's say this array can store only numbers so it will or let's say this array can store only alphabets so this will store some alphabets like a e i o v right so here we can see that this array a is storing alphabets alphabets right so we can visualize an array in this form it is a large block of memory divided into small small chunks and each of these chunks will store a single data item now let's call this array arr right now here we have to differentiate the second data item from the first one and for that what i'll do is i'll give indexes to each of these data items so i'll give indexes to each of these data items so here we can see that the first data item or the first element stored in this array is at index 0 right so the first element stored in this array is at index 0 the second element stored in this array is at index 1 so i'll represent this as arr 
which is the name of the array which is the name of the array in square braces in square braces here we will write the index in square braces the index and then the value stored at that index or at that index of the array so here we can see that at index 0 we are storing 7 hence at arr of 0 will store 7 so here we can see that at arr of 0 we are storing a value 7 right here a is in uppercase right so at arr of 0 we are storing a value 7 similarly at arr of 1 we are storing 3 so at arr of 1 we are storing 3 similarly at at arr of 2 we are also storing 3 so at arr of 2 we are also storing 3 right so we can start from 0 we can start from 0 and we can go till 4 in this case right so we can start from 0 and we can go till 4 now here we, we can see that we are storing a total of 1 2 3 4 5 elements in this array so the size of this array is 5 we are storing a total of 5 elements let's say the, the size of this array is n right so for 5 elements we are starting from 0 and we are going till 4 right so i can write it as we are starting from 0 and we are going till 5 minus 1 4 is 1 less than 5 right now if the size of this array is n then in that case we will start from 0 and we will go till n minus 1 right and this type of indexing which starts from 0 and goes till n minus 1 this type of indexing is called zero based indexing right which starts from 0 so this type of indexing is called zero based indexing similarly we have another type of indexing another type of indexing which we call as one based indexing and as the name suggests this type of indexing starts from one right and this type of indexing starts from one and goes till n here we can see that n is the size of the array which is five in this case so in this case it will go till five so it starts from one and it goes till n where n is the size of the array <clears throat> right but in general or most of the times we use zero based indexing in most programming languages right so in most programming languages we will use this zero based indexing right and in some and in some cases we'll use this one based indexing right <clears throat> So now let's see some examples on the array using flowcharts. So let's say we have to store and print five numbers given by the users, given by the user using arrays, right? So we have to store the five numbers inside an array. And then using this array, we simply have to print all these five numbers, right? So let's say i have this array arr of size 5 so this array can store so this array can store five numbers right and let's say i'm using zero based indexing so i'll store all these five numbers inside this array from 0 till 4 so let's begin now firstly to use an array i firstly have to declare it so firstly i'll declare an array named arr then we know that we have to start from 0 and end at 4 so i'll initialize i from 0 and i'll have this condition i should be less than or equals to 4 right and if this condition is true then we will simply input arr of i and then we will simply update the value of i and we will simply go back so initially the value of i is 0 so initially this condition is true since i is less than 4 0 is less than 4 so this is true then we will input arr of i i is initially 0 so the first time we'll execute this line it will store the first element at arr of 0 
right so the first element is stored at arr of 0 then we'll update the value of i again it will go back again it will check the condition again it will input arr of i now this time the value of i <coughs> is 1 so this time the second number would be stored at arr of 1 so the second number would be stored at arr of 1 then at arr of 2 then at arr of 3 and then finally at arr of 4 so after executing this loop all the five numbers would be stored inside this array and similarly we'll print them so again i'll use another loop which starts from 0 goes till 4 and then within this loop i'll simply display arr of i <clears throat> so here we can see that again we'll simply print this first number or we'll simply print the arr of 0 first then we'll print arr of 1 then arr of 2 then 3 and then finally 4 so this is how we can store the elements or we can store multiple data items inside a single array now let's see another example let's say we have to find the minimum of five numbers given by the user as input right so firstly we have to store these five numbers inside an array arr so let's say we have this array arr and we have uh, the five numbers which are let's say eight three five two four right so what i will do is i point at this location first and and also i'll first initialize a variable min by arr of zero which is the first element stored inside this array which is eight in this case so I, I initialize min by 8. So initially the value of min is 8. And my pointer or uh, my uh, loop is starting from this point. Let me erase it first. So I'm starting from this point. Right. So I'll compare this value with this 8. So is this value smaller than this min the answer is no so we'll simply move on to the next element so now the next element is 3 so again we'll check is 3 smaller than 8 the answer is yes hence we'll change the value of min from 8 to 3 then again we'll move on to the next element so now the next element is 5 so is 5 smaller than this 3 the answer is no so we'll move on to the next element so is 2 smaller than this 3 the answer is yes hence we'll update the value of min from 3 to 2 again we'll go to the next element now the next element is 4 so is 4 less than 2 the answer is no so we have simply completed the whole iteration or we have simply completed the loop so we can see that at the end of this loop we are getting a value of 2 inside this variable called min which is also the minimum value stored inside this array hence we can see that using loops we can simply find the minimum element stored inside this array so firstly what i will do is i'll store each and every element or i'll store all these five numbers inside this array arr so again i'll use a loop which starts from zero and ends at four after that what I will do is I'll st start another loop which starts from 0 and ends at 4. Now here what I will do is I'll initialize min by arr of 0. arr of 0 which is the first element stored inside this array. Then within this loop what I will do is I'll compare arr of i with min. So if i is initially 0 so it will compare arr of 0 with min so if this element is smaller than this min what i will do is i'll simply update the value of min to arr of i right and after this i'll simply update the value of i so here we can see that we are if uh, this element is smaller than this min then we are simply updating the value of min and we are up also updating the value of i after this and if this uh, condition is false then we are simply just incrementing the value of i so let's see how this works so let's say initially the value of i is 0 and let's say if this is the array 
and it has five elements stored inside this array err let's uh, let's take the same elements 8 3 5 2 4 right so firstly it will store arr of 0 inside this variable min so min will initially have 8 then it will check this condition which is true initially then it will check whether arr of i arr of i means arr of 0 because i is 0 so it will point at this point this location so is 8 smaller than this 8 the answer is no so we'll go to the no part and we'll simply update the value of i so now the value of i has become 1 then it, again it will go back and again it will check the same condition whether arr of i is less than min or not then again it will compare this 3 with this 8 now since this 3 is smaller than this 8 so i'll go to the yes part Hence, I'll update the value of min to error of i. Error of i means error of 1, which is 3. Hence, I'll update the value of min from 8 to 3. And similarly, this would continue. And at the end, we'll get the smallest element stored inside this array. Right. And finally, after this loop, we will simply display the min, which is 2. So at the end of this array, we'll simply print 2. So, this is basically how we can find the minimum element stored inside an array.